Okay, let's consider this part four of our video series. And um, we're at a pretty good point right now. I do want to talk about one thing that may happen. This is a pretty good looking curve right here. Um, I do notice that I'm not sure about maximums, minimums in here. Um, I have an area, I have a zero. It tells, states me my, my max on this graph is over here. My min is over here, but I don't know about relative maxes or anything. I, maybe I'd like a better perspective of the blue, but at least I have some idea what the blue curve looks like um, through here. Um, one thing that could help me out with that might be if I put in a, a different, uh, let's say, X max, max of say 1.6 or so. I get a bit bit better feel, but it still isn't utilizing the space for the blue. Now, that's because Excel is trying to chase the red graph all the way down here. If I put maybe where this flattened out a little bit more for my for my tangent line of say 0.36 looks fairly flat, 0.36, I get a better view of our graph, what's going on there. Um, I could zoom in a little bit, but if I put something like 1.59 here maybe, 1.59, we're really chasing this thing down, and as I get more and more vertical and get bigger slopes, which of course we're going to run into, this becomes a bit cumbersome, a bit kind of ugly. I might want a better view of the blue. And to be honest, if I'm only interested in the area of the curve, I'm really not crazy about the view of this. I'd like the blue graph to be maximized. So we're going to go ahead and, and maximize the blue area. And the nice thing about that is, is I know I really wish that my Y scale went from negative 110 up to 165. Those values are there. Or if I change this to say negative 1.2 and change this to 1.2 or 1.1, now I can see why. Wow, I really wish I was just looking from negative 27 to 32 and, and taking up some more blue space. Maybe I don't care about the tangent line. So I would be in the constant process of trying to, to rescale this axis. If I'm going to be doing that repeatedly, I'm going to create a button for it. So here's how we do that. I'm going to go to insert. I don't know why, or to view, excuse me. I don't know why macros are located on view, but they are, so I guess it was just a place to put them. I'm gonna get the drop down arrow of macros, and I'm gonna record a macro, and I'm gonna call this just the function, because we're gonna emphasize the function on the graph, and I'm gonna click okay. And now at this point, we're recording. You don't have to be quiet because it's not picking up our voices, but uh, it is recording every move we make. All right, the first thing we need to do is make certain that as we're recording, we are not, we don't already have the chart selected. We need to record selecting the chart. So if you are on the chart, click some cell not on the chart, then select the chart. I want to work with this scale. So as I float over one of the numbers on the scale, I get vertical value axis. I'm going to right click it format that axis, and I want to just change some auto for my minimum and maximum. And I'm going to change to, for no particular reason, I just want to change these to some fixed value. I'm going to choose negative 10 for my minimum and a fixed value of 10 for my maximum, and I'm going to hit close, okay, which wouldn't be exactly what I would want, I don't think, but that we're going to work with. And now I'm going to select off the chart and this is an important one, don't forget this, I'm going to stop recording the macro. At this point, I want to go into the macro and take a look at it, and I have my little editor open down here, but if you don't have your editor open here, you can go Alt, hold down Alt, hit F11 up at the top right-hand side of your keyboard, and it takes you in. It may not take you directly to our macro, it'll take you to some world where we have a Project Explorer like this. You will note Maybe perhaps down at the bottom you have something that says modules. When you open up your modules, you'll have one. I have five because I've been doing some work on this. But when you double click and open up your one, it should look something like what I have here. Now, to be honest, this range C2 select isn't important. But then I have, I selected a chart. And your chart might not be chart two. Mine just happened to be named chart two. Yours could be one or three or some other number. Don't worry about that. Active Sheet Objects Chart 2 Activate. That actually is the exact same statement, so I'm going to delete one of those. I must have clicked on it twice. And then I selected, this is the y-axis, Excel value is the y-axis. It tells me it was at 1400, negative 1400 for the minimum. I don't care about that, deleting it. It tells me the maximum was at 200. I don't care about that, I'm deleting it. 
here's what I change those to. Minimum 10, maximum negative, or minimum negative 10, maximum 10. Okay, I'm going to come back to this, but I'm going to minimize this for a moment. And I want to find on my sheet the minimum and maximum I want to use. But it's out there somewhere. Here's my minimum. I want to use negative 27.34. That's the bottom of my blue curve. Here's my maximum of my blue curve up at 32.35. I would love to have my, my graph scale between those two numbers. But as you may remember, those two numbers are available for us. We just have to capture where they're located at. And mine are located at L27 and M27. I don't want this and this. I don't want this and this. Those are X values. I certainly don't want this and this. I want just the raw data of my smallest Y, biggest Y. And there they are. As you recall, that's the minimum from our chart. That's the maximum value in the Ys up from our chart. So I'm going to record those L27. I'm writing them down as I speak. L27, M27. If yours are located elsewhere, you're going to want to have those written down. I'm going into my Visual Basic Editor, which you could open with Alt F11 again, but I'm going to just open it here. And here's what I'm going to do. I need to grab the values that are in L27 and M27. I would go next to the green apostrophe, hit an Enter, give myself a little bit of space underneath it, and I'm going to type in Y min equals. I'm just calling Y min a variable. I could just as easily call it A equals. Uh, y min equals cells, C-E-L-L-S, left parenthesis, excuse our bell here. Y min equals cells. Now it prompts me for a row. As you recall, my row was 27, column. My column is L. Unfortunately, I can't put in L. It wants what column number I'm in. And let's see, H-I-J-K-L is the 12th letter of the alphabet, so 12. That's how I enter L27. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just enter L27, but not too inconvenient. Then you can probably guess what I'm going to type in next. Y max, try to type in next. Y max equals cells. I'm still in the 27th row, but now I'm M27. That's one column over, column 13. Okay, if you've got a little programming experience, you may be working ahead of me right now. I don't really want my minimum value to be negative 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I want my minimum value to be what's in L27 or what's my Y min value. So I'm going to type in Y min, which is just a variable that's holding my value from L27. Instead of my maximum being 10, I'm going to make that Y max. And I think we should be good to go. We're going to give this a shot in a second. So I'm going to minimize this whole screen. And I need a button to push or something to click on in order to activate that macro. So I'm going to insert a text box. You can insert a lot of different things to do this, but I'm going to insert a text box. And I'm going to type in that function just to kind of emphasize that this is going to, to make my graph um, basically zoom fit my function, my blue function. And since it's blue, I might color this text box, the inside of it, fill it with a light blue color, maybe there. Okay, let's take a look now if that actually takes us from a minimum of negative 27 to a maximum of 32. Doesn't do anything yet, but that's because I haven't told it to trigger that macro. So I'm going to right click on the text box. I see assign macro. Now, I have a few to choose from. You should only have just the function. And I'm going to click OK. I'll just click in some white space over here. And now I float around over that button, and Excel gives me the finger. And that's saying, click me, see what happens. So I can't pass that up. I click. There I am down here at negative 27. Here I am up here at, here I am up here at 32.35. Okay, um, I need another button that's going to now undo that so I get to focus on everything. Uh, I want the red back in, so uh, this is not going to allow me to perhaps uh, to, see the, to see the tangent line. You will note, though, that this is dynamic. If I go to, say, change this to 2, now, well, wait a minute, why isn't my blue in focus? So I can just hit it again. It refocuses that. 
Okay, but I do need to be able to get back to where I can see the whole thing. So I'm going to record one more macro. I'm going to go to insert or view, excuse me, I did it again. Macros, record a new macro. I'm going to call this one both, as in both functions, B-O-T-H. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to my axis. I'm going to right click on my axis. In fact, I'm going to click off in space first. I'm going to go to my axis, right click on my axis, format axis, and I'm going to turn this back to auto and back to auto, minimum, maximum, and I'm going to hit close. Very, very important. I'm going to go up to macros. Oops, before I do that, I'm going to select a cell. I'm going to go up to macros, and I'm going to stop recording. Make sure you stop the recording, otherwise you're going to have some frustrations ahead. And I'm going to open up my editor again just to take a look at what we created. I open up my macro, and at that point I see I have, go back to my module 5, I have created this guy, which I selected C1. I don't really need that. Yours might not have, and this happened to us throughout the day today, Yours might not have these first two lines of code here, but notice those are the exact same as these. So this is exactly what I want my macro to say, but I'm going to take these off in case you didn't have those. And here's what you would do. Create a little space. Come up to your just the function function or macro. Copy those first two and put them down in here. And now we should be good. So let's take a look. I'm going to come back. I need a new text box. Insert text box. I'm going to type both in here. I'm going to color this one pinkish, kind of because it's going to include our red tangent line. And I'm going to right click, assign macro, both. You have two choices. I have four because I've been working in here. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and take a look how this works. I'm going to go back and emphasize the blue, and now I'm going to see both. Emphasize the blue, now I'm going to see both. So pretty slick. Okay, now what is left for you to do now once you are satisfied with everything you have here? You may, I don't know where I want to put this area. You can decide where you want to put that area. But once you're satisfied with everything that you have, and the appearance, and maybe I wouldn't be totally satisfied at this point, but you can go down to this. I have named this. You can rename this worksheet poly for polynomial. And then after that, you can right click on it, move or copy, create a copy, move it to the end. Okay. And you will see I now have a poly and a poly two, and they are indistinguishable. Poly two, I'm going to right click that. I'm going to rename this sign. And here is my sign function. This you're going, to, you're going to be thrilled how quick we get through this. What do I need in order to change this to a sign function? I'm going to edit my equation up here. This becomes y equals a times sine of bx plus c plus d. And so I look and see, what do I need? I need an A, I need a B, I need a C, I need a D, but I don't need these guys. Delete and maybe clear those out. You can come back and take out this, take out the borders as well. I think I need to put a border back in there now. So reboard of that. Because I only need A, B, C, D. I'm not changing this, not changing this, certainly not changing my buttons at this time. I'm going to move down to I'm going to move down into here. I I don't change this guy, but I do need to change this. See it's my polynomial. I need to change this. So this is going to become equals my a value times sine of b times my x value is this guy plus C, close parentheses, plus my D value. So if you want a little bit better look at that, I'll click down here. 
there's my equation, which is just representative of what I have up here. Now, it didn't change this to a sine graph. It's just trying to hunt down my tangent line, which is not going to look good until I get my sine graph up here. Okay, my slope, that should be our derivative of a sine of bx plus d, not this big guy. So my derivative of this would still include the factor a, but the derivative of sine is cosine. So I need c2 times cosine of, now I need b times x, my x value, plus c. But this is a chain rule. I've got a function, bx plus c, inside a function sine. So this is the outside derivative, cosine of, the inside function. I don't want c here, of course. I want this c, that cell, times the inside function. But I still need times the inside derivative. The inside derivative, the derivative of bx plus c is b. That is my derivative. And that gives me the slope of my line that doesn't look like a tangent line, but the blue doesn't look like a sine curve. So what do I have left to do? Well, I really want this formula right here. I'm going to steal it from myself. Control C. I want that formula to be as part of my T-chart. So I'm going to cruise down to my T-chart. Here are the Y values of my T-chart right here. My x values, you can't even see them because I've shrunk that column. But I don't want this polynomic formula. I want this formula. But here's my x value. Let me do this down here. Here's my x value. I don't want that to be C13. I want that to be my x value right next to me, A27. Yours might not be A27 because I've created some additional rows. My C needs to be dollar signed. C dollar sign 2, C dollar sign 3, C dollar sign 4, C dollar sign 5. You should remember we're doing that so when we replicate, those values stay. But the A27, when I replicate, as you will see, I want that value to become A30 when I'm down to row 30. But C2, C3, C4, C5 continue. So all that is left, double click replicate. Oh, let's see what we have up here. Does it look like a sine curve? It looks like a sine curve. Just to be sure, I'm going to go A is 1. That's one sign of B is 1. That's 1x. One I'm not going to raise it. I'm going to go 0 and 0. I'm going to have my x bin be 0. My y min be 2 pi or about 6.28. And that looks awfully good as a sine curve. Does my tangent line still work if I change this? I'm going to go to, uh, to 3.14. And there's our tangent line right there. Does my function still work? Functions are working. It's possible when you create those, those buttons might not. Um, let's go one more tangent line just for good measure. I'm going to go tangent at 4.5. There we go. Got it. Emphasize the blue. Emphasize both. So just a great little project for you. Um, we're going to add a number to this. I uh, hope you enjoy this. Um, but if, if you don't at this time, trust me, um, you're going to be really glad you have this project in the uh, coming years for your education. So thank you very much, and we may be adding some to this.